Yo, comic fam, I hope you enjoy the last part to my Todd McFarlane interview. Hit that like button, slap the subscribe button, and make sure to comment down below. Let me know your favorite Todd McFarlane anything. Spawn figure, Amazing Spider-Man cover. It'll enter you to win this copy of Amazing Spider-Man 298 the first time he drew the web slinger. Enjoy the interview. He's about to dish an amazing story that blew my mind that he's about to tell you. Last thing little different of a question, but I, 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 I've heard you touch on it very quickly. I'm hoping you can expand. You've won a Grammy in music. I don't know if you like play accordion or something, but I'm curious, are you friends with Eddie Vedder? And do you have any gripes with Madonna still? Me having a Grammy is actually should be inspirational to people. My wife teaches a class. She's a professor at, 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 at the ASU um, in trying to convert your passions into potential jobs. But one of the things that we think of is that we have to go in a straight line. And what we don't give ourselves a luxury of, especially when you're young, is you just at times trip into stuff. I mean, we've already talked about how we tripped into characters and how we tripped into image comic books being historical and whatever else. Here's how you get a Grammy in which, let me, let me go on record as saying, I don't play any instruments, never have, don't even know how to read music. Okay. So, so let me just preface that. Okay, now the question should be, well, how do you get a Grammy then, right? That's a pretty prestigious award. Okay, well, let me walk you through as fast as I can. I do a comic book uh, and I'm working for Marvel. And then I say, no, nah, I'm gonna go break it on my own. I wanna do my own stuff. And we started a new comic company called Image and then you got Spawn. And I go, yeah, I'm rocking and rolling with Spawn. And then the sales are big on Spawn. HBO eventually comes in and says, hey, we'd like to do animation. I ask them one question. Can I say fuck? They said, yes, I signed the contract. We start doing it. Oh, by the way, you have to put me in charge of the show, even though I have 0% experience in animation. So again, zero music experience, zero animation. All of a sudden, I'm an animation director, right? Okay, you just leverage yourself. Spawn comes out, wins a couple of Emmys. All of a sudden, you're an Emmy winner. Woo! Who would have thought? On animation, I'm just a comic geek. And then you get the phone call. Eddie Vedder is on the phone and he's saying, hey, Todd, Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. Hey, I've been watching this show, Spawn, and, and, our, and, our, and our record label has been bugging us to do another music video. We don't want to, we think they're silly, but I finally came up with an idea, a way we can do it. Let's animate it and we don't have to be in our own video, which is interesting because most bands want to be in their video. They were like trying to figure out how not to be in their video. We did do the evolution, do the evolution comes out. Uh, it goes, it, all of a sudden somebody says, hey, Todd, I got nominated for a Grammy. Wow, that was easy. First music video I'm involved in goes for a Grammy. Woo, cool. Uh, first animation I'm involved in goes for Emmys. Woo, right? And I, you, you, you start making it look like it's way easier. <laughs> And I haven't replicated either one of those since. We, we go to the Grammy Awards and obviously one of the finalists. And yeah, Madonna beats us. Noonan. Noonan. So you go, okay, never going to happen again. We end up doing another music video. This one for Corn, half, you know, real humans and then half animation. That one gets nominated for a Grammy. Now we're two for two. I'm like, wow, this is easy. Just got to do a music video. You get nominated for Grammy. We won that one. So we didn't win the one for the Pearl Jam. We won it for the corn, right? But again, it all just sort of begats one after the other. So when we're editing the Do the Evolution video, Eddie Vedder, at least at that point, had editing machines at his house. I guess just what rock and rollers do. They edit stuff. Because um, I remember, he goes, Todd, we got this song. It's called Do the Evolution. It's about all time, space, and dimension. And I want to plug it into three minutes. I'm like, okay, seems like a easy task. He goes, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a feel, a vibe. So he took two or three episodes of Spawn and edited them to his music. And it was super cool. I wish I had a copy of it. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, Eddie, this is pretty good. Who did that? He goes, I did. And I go, what do you mean? He said, he goes, yeah, I've got an editing machine at home. I go, so you just, you just went to board and just like, <laughs> edit stuff like okay I, I i i would have had a different image of what you did in your spare time but so now we're doing the do the evolution video and we're actually editing the official video eddie says hey todd do you mind if i come down and help you in the editing bit yeah sure come on down you're you know 
So he comes down and it took us probably three, four days to get it right where we want it. But every day Eddie would come in and he brought this little suitcase, this little, this little briefcase with him and he'd plunk it down and then we go. And I, I remember, and, and I remember at the first day he picked it up and he left and I went, Oh, must be going to another meeting or something. I don't know. Next day, here comes Eddie, got his little briefcase, lays it on, goes, doesn't do nothing, leaves, leaves. Day three, comes with that same damn suitcase. And finally at lunch, I said, hey, Eddie, you know, I don't mean to be personal, but like, you keep coming with that suitcase. Like, why you keep bringing that suitcase? You're not, not like, you know, you're pulling anything out of it. And he's like, oh my God, Todd. Oh, I'm glad you finally asked, right? I'm like, what? He goes, I didn't think you were going to ever ask. And so he walks over to it. He opens it up. And <laughs> I kid you not, inside the, the briefcase, two baseball gloves and a baseball. And one of the gloves is left-handed. He knew I was a baseball player. Eddie's a big, big baseball nut himself. And he was like, I was wondering if you wanted to play catch, <laughs> right? So, I, so I'm, and, and to this day, I'm going... So if I had never asked him what was in the, he was just going to walk away and never say, Todd, you want to play catch? So I'm like, yeah, sure, Eddie, let's go. You go, even got a lefty. I knew you were a lefty. I go, okay, cool. Now, it's also a heat wave in LA at this time. It was, it was unseasonably hot, like 105, 110. I'm from Phoenix. I'm like a cockroach. Not, not a big deal to me. But Eddie Vedder comes from Seattle. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of rain, a lot of cloud cover. He's dressed in his black shirt and his black pants, his black boots. He's got his big belt. He's looking good. And he's got a cigarette because he smokes. And he's got his glove and he catch, boom. Take a puff, catch, boom. About 15, 20 catches into it, I think he's going to have a fucking heart attack. He is like, <laughs> it's 110. It's 110. Sweating. And he's dressed in black. Oh my and it's goodness. like, this isn't like, you're not dressed for this weather. And, and you're not living in Phoenix. You're not a cockroach like me. And by the way, you got your smoking on top of the dude. And it was like, and then, and then finally I had to just go, Eddie, you, you, you want to go get a drink? You want to take a break? He's like, okay, 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 fine, Todd, thanks. If I hadn't have been generous, would he have just gone till he just died? I don't know. Like, you know, dudes, dudes are stupid. We're stupid. <laughs> We're like, I'm not going to quit if you're not going to quit. I'm not hot if you're not hot, right? So we would we would have just gone till he passed out. Who, who knows? So he must have been fanboy and he wanted to play catch with with the great <laughs> Todd McFarlane. I appreciate you, Todd. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, I, I think the the community is going to dig all the stuff we chatted about. And I just wanted to thank you. Your legacy is inspirational and it's just starting. And I'm so excited to watch where you take this community. Well, here, Tom, Tom, you know, here's the thing about people say a lot of kind things about me and some of the people I, I grew up with that are in our industry. You're not really aware what you're doing. You're just living your life, right? I mean, like you, you start your career and if all of a sudden somebody gives you another break, another break, and next thing you know, you're doing your show on ABC and you become the next Larry King, then everybody's like, oh my God, oh my God. But you're just, today is just today. Right. And then what ends up happening is you put enough todays together and all of a sudden they turn into years and years turn into decades, right? And, and, and longevity will give you some prestige, if you will. Um, but I only say that in that, People stop themselves from starting that today. And for somebody listening, they don't even know it. They're going to talk themselves out of it. This could have been the first today on that path, that marathon that it ends up being, that you just go, wow, I guess I've been doing it for 30 years now. You're not, you're not thinking about it, right? I'm, I'm not thinking about what I've done for 30 years. I'm thinking about what I can do with Spawn in the next year, right? I'm, or 30 years in the other direction. But people, people sort of talk themselves out of that, that they can't do it. And it's like, you think for one second that I thought some dumb, hick, mildly talented Canadian kid was, was going to lead the life that I live and, and under no circumstances, right? But I just, I just hustled, like you said at the very beginning, I just hustled. And what's, 
what frustrates me is like, is trying to get that into others and go, come on, I am no better, no more skilled than a 10,000 other people. Why don't you want to at least attempt it? Because it's a good life. If it works, it's a good life. So, but, it, but you're never going to get there if you never attempt it, right? What's the worst that happens? You fail and go back to the thing you've been doing for the last 20 years. It's like a haircut. It's like a haircut, right? right. Oh, I changed it. I don't like it. It'll grow back. You can always go back. But, but, but like, don't talk yourself out of the first step because you're never going to get to the second or the third or the fifth. Look, I don't drink alcohol, but I used to go to the parties and I used to go, no, no, I don't drink. And eventually all the kids accepted it, right? And they were like, oh, Todd. As a matter of fact, I would come sometimes. I, I, I give my share to people. So I became a value. Todd doesn't drink. We get his, we, Todd, I want yours. And so as soon as I walk in the door, I was like value. Everybody was clinging going, Todd, I want yours. Um, okay, fine. My son, I remember asking me one time with my daughter, he's going, dad, wasn't it difficult to say no to, to drinking with around your peers? And the answer is, yeah. But here's what I can tell you. Every time I said it thereafter, it got easier. Yeah. This is the same with starting a career. The most difficult time is going to be at the beginning. And then you're going to get into a groove. And you're going to look at you. Look at you. You're doing a great job. Look at how relaxed you are. I'm sure you weren't nearly that relaxed first time you did it. Right? Now look at you. You're a big shot. So I encourage everybody to knock my ass off stage. Take my place because I will be cheerleading you from a distance. Thanking people like you, uh, Tom, that are keeping our community thriving during these difficult times. It's awesome. It's awesome, right? We get to communicate and talk about things that we all have a common bond for, so, you know? So you're doing a hell of a job yourself. So it's not, it's not us, the creator, it's everybody, right? It's everybody. Todd, thank you so much for the kind words. Thanks for joining me and the comic fam on the mic today. I appreciate you, man. Just one last warning for everybody out there. Make sure at all times, it's not a 23 hour job, it's a 24 hour job. Geek responsibly. <laughs>